In the previous module, we showed a typical call flow involving a pair of phones and two asterisk systems, where everything went just right. We did not show what happens when there are configuration problems, such as mismatched passwords or codec incompatibilities. We can't show all the possible ways that a SIP call could fail, but we can show you how to debug asterisk and SIP so that you can troubleshoot for yourself what the problem is when something goes wrong. The debugging tools we'll introduce will let you look at both the SIP and SDP parts of the overall message, but that distinction isn't really important now. We won't talk about debugging SDP, but the data will be there if you want to look at it. The Asterisk CLI offers a way to dynamically enable and disable SIP debugging. The command SIP set debug on will cause Asterisk to print to the screen all the SIP messages it sends or receives. This can be several messages per second on even a lightly loaded system, so there is also a way to filter SIP messages Asterisk prints. SIP set debug peer, followed by the peer name, will print only the SIP messages to or from that peer. SIP set debug IP works the same way, but for an IP address. It's a good idea to disable SIP debugging if you're not actively troubleshooting a SIP call. This is done by running the command SIP set debug off. There's a lot to learn to be able to successfully troubleshoot complex SIP problems, and we won't cover most of it here. But knowing the basics of SIP debugging in Asterisk is a vital skill for the Asterisk administrator. On the Asterisk CLI, we will turn on SIP debugging. We will then start our XLite soft phone. You can see several SIP messages post to the console as the XLite attempts to register. We'll then turn off the SIP debug output so that we can review our capture. In this example, the first message includes the text SIP read, which tells us that it's an incoming message. We can see this is a register message. Register is a SIP primitive just like invite or options. This register message is sent to the IP address of our asterisk server. The user agent field tells us that the SIP peer is identifying itself as an XLite phone. Take note of the call ID. This number will let us track this leg of the call. Further down, we see a block that has the text transmitting. This is an outbound message sent from asterisk in response. We know it's related to the register we just looked at because the call IDs are the same. The 401 unauthorized message asterisk sends tells the XLite phone that it must authenticate before it can register. The XLite responds with another register message. This one includes an authorization header which contains the authentication credentials. We can see that asterisk processes this new request but rejects it by sending a 403 forbidden message back to the phone. Here we can see Asterisk has printed a notice to the console from Chan Sip telling us that the authentication failed. Now we'll show the same setup, but with matching passwords. There's the first register from the phone, Asterisk's 401 unauthorized response, then another register with the authorization header. This time Asterisk doesn't send a 403 forbidden message, so we know that the credentials matched. This message from Asterisk, which is not part of the SIP debug, tells us that phone 2 has registered. As the final leg of our register sequence, we see asterisk sends a 200 OK. Depending on how you have your SIP peer configured, you may see other messages on the console. To keep track of a call leg, look for the matching call IDs. Now, with SIP debug enabled, we will dial a number from our newly registered SIP phone. This set of SIP messages will follow in a similar fashion to the basic call flow we demonstrated in the previous module. First, we see an invite message. The user agent field tells us this is from our XLite phone. The to field tells us that the extension 9999 was dialed at the IP address of our asterisk server. This section of the message contains the SDP headers. The next message is from asterisk. It is the 401 unauthorized message. Next, we see the phone acknowledges the message from asterisk and then right away responds with a new invite message, which includes the authorization header. Asterisk responds with a 404 not found message. This is because the dialed extension 9999 does not exist. SIP is modeled after HTTP, so this 404 message is very similar to a 404 message you may have received in your web browser when a website was not found. If we try one more time with a valid extension, we can see a similar call flow. Invite from the phone, 401 from asterisk, acknowledgement, and then a new invite from the phone with authorization. Next, asterisk sends 100 trying, followed by 200 OK. The phone acknowledges, 
And now the call is established. As you can see, some problems can be identified and resolved using SIP debugging, even if you're not a SIP expert. You don't have to understand everything that's printed on the console if you just want to know what's happening at a high level. Debugging SIP on the Asterisk console is handy, but it can be a little unwieldy. It's not easy to look at several messages at once, while it is easy to get confused about which messages arrived at what times. Fortunately, there are several third-party tools that can help make SIP debugging easier. TCP Dump and Wireshark are two of these tools. Both are packet capture utilities that collect and store a copy of network traffic sent or received on the system. TCP Dump is a console-based application, and Wireshark is a GUI-based application. Both have robust filtering capabilities, so you can tune them to collect only certain packets, such as all traffic to or from this IP address, or all SIP packets in this time frame. Wireshark is especially useful because it has extensive libraries of protocol definitions and can decode most of the packets for you. There's even a feature that lets you automatically reconstruct a VoIP call, so all the messages on the call are sorted and presented in order. Wireshark can be an invaluable tool. Wireshark is especially useful in complex environments where more than one call needs to be traced at a time, or where there are several legs of a single call. SIP debug in Asterisk doesn't lend itself to tracing multiple calls or to recording SIP messages for future analysis. Wireshark makes both of these tasks trivial. So far we've only discussed SIP debugging from within Asterisk or by using a separate tool. Many SIP devices offer logging or debugging features of their own. Check the documentation or support of your device and see what it has to offer. If you need to submit a bug report or help request for a SIP device or asterisk, it can be really helpful to provide the debug information from both sides of the dialog. In this module, we introduce the SIP debug commands asterisk offers on the CLI and use them to look at a few calls on the console. We also introduced Wireshark, a packet capture tool that can make SIP debugging even easier. We don't intend this module to be a comprehensive introduction to SIP debugging. There are numerous other tools and techniques that can be used to troubleshoot SIP. We encourage you to seek these out and to find what works best in your environment. Hopefully this module has given you a head start at debugging SIP. In the next module, we'll look at the details involved when setting up a SIP trunk in Asterisk.